Hey everyone, with the summer season just a few short weeks away, it won't be long before the aroma of barbecuing meat will be filling the air, and guys and gals will be taking their grills out of storage, all excited about the prospect of grilling that perfect piece of meat on the grill. So it's up to us as designers to help increase the excitement and love for barbecue with some amazing designs related to this favorite summer afternoon pastime. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create a number of design components with the help of AI. In this case, recraft AI and then put everything together to create some amazing designs that barbecue lovers will want to wear not only whilst they're barbecuing but throughout the entire calendar year. So without further ado, let's head out over to my PC and get started. Let's go. How's it going everybody? So here I am on Google Trends and as you can see here, this is basically the trend for the term barbecue. I don't want to bore boggy down with too many you know, numbers and statistics and stuff like that. But suffice it to say, if we just hover the mouse pointer just above over here, this is from 16th April 2023, we can see that the term barbecue was searched quite a bit during the months of April, May, June and July, which obviously in the Northern Hemisphere is obviously the summertime. As you can see here, it reached its peak, all right, between the 2nd and 8th of July for a perfect score of 100, okay? And all throughout the year, it never curtails below 50. As you can see, this was the lowest point between 26 November and 2nd December 2023 um, with a score of 52. So barbecue, or rather the term barbecue, is always a popular niche to design for. You can take it from so many different angles. And one of the best things that I like to do is just basically surf through different platforms like Redbubble and TeePublic and Merch and Etsy just in order to see what kind of designs are being posted. Again, not to copy them directly, but to get motivation and inspiration from. And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. So let's just head off from uh, Google Trends here. Okay, so here I am on Redbubble and all I did was I typed in barbecue and these are the most relevant searches that Redbubble is presenting. If we just click on newest over here, we can see what recent designs have been populated onto the platform. And again, you're going to find results pertaining to barbecue and others who are just trying to, you know, um, throw in any kind of keyword for any kind of design in hopes of being found. I did a little bit of research beforehand and I came across a really interesting design. And that pertains to this keyword, Gorilla T-shirts, where basically it's sort of taking a gorilla and changing it to a barbecue term in form of gorilla. And clicking on the design over here, we can see that, you know, this particular type of design, I am not putting down any sellers because again, every seller who creates a design, I tip my hat off to you, especially if you put in a lot of work for it. Um, and it might appeal to a buyer out there, but this started getting the cogwheels rolling in my mind. I loved the keyword, or rather the term gorilla. It's a nice cross between barbecue and gorilla. There's the animalistic beast of, you know, wanting to cook meat and, and barbecue and the smell of barbecue, the whole summer thing with respect to barbecue. You may tell that I love barbecue myself too as well. But I started thinking, you know, this is something I could definitely start designing for. And I went on to Etsy just to see what other types of designs were being posted for Gorilla. We can, we have one over here too as well. We got a rather muscular gorilla standing in front of a, a kettle grill, you know, with the flames licking out here. We have Gorilla King, all right, uh, Gorillasaurus Rex. And if you can see here, it's a relatively new key term. So this is the time to jump onto it. On Etsy, there were only eight results for this keyword and a couple of them didn't even have the word gorilla in it or on the design itself. If we hop back over to Redbubble here, let's just click back. Um, yeah, there are only 51 results for this keyword. So this is definitely something that you want to start considering and started creating designs for. So I decided I was going to start creating a design for that, but I wanted to come up with a keyword phrase, a quotation, totally different from everything that I've seen over here on Redbubble and on Etsy. And I was, you know, I was browsing through the internet and I came up, up with this phrase here, bring out your inner gorilla. You know, summer's coming around the corner. You want to get that meat on the grill and start grilling. I apologize for all those vegans and vegetarians, but this is a meat lovers video today. But I still want you to watch it because you can still use the tips and tricks that I share in this particular video for your own respective likes um, and designs. So with that said, bring out your inner gorilla was going to be the keyword phrase that I was going to be designing for. So let's just take this window off screen here. 
Now I wanted to head over to Recraft in order to compose my design. Now today I'm going to be doing a little something different. Instead of asking Recraft to compose the whole the entire design with the text, I wanted to actually get my fingers wet again in the whole concept of putting together different components. So today I was going to ask Recraft just to compose the different components that I had in my mind in order to put onto this design. Now, what I also wanted to do was I wanted to put Recraft to the test with respect to its level of detail. So what I decided to do was I was gonna click on rastered image here and I was gonna change the configuration to nine is to 16. So that would make it really easy for me to transpose any of these components onto a canvas size 4,500 pixel by 5,400 pixel so that I wouldn't have a lot of trouble resizing or whatnot. So what I did was I created the first one and let's just say I wanted a cartoon illustration of a gorilla's head. So a cartoon illustration of a gorilla's head. Now, as you can see here, by default, Recraft gives you a level of detail set to primitive. And for that particular canvas, I was gonna keep it on primitive. Now, when you press and hold the Alt key, you can actually duplicate the canvas so you don't have to create them every single time and as you can see the instructions for the image to be generated was copied but all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button here I'm going to take up the level detail from primitive to low and I'm going to do the same thing for all of the different levels of detail that Recraft provides us with and again it really doesn't take that long we have high and we're going to do one more as you see directly behind me we're going to take that up to extreme all right now i had my six canvases basically laid out for these components and if i wanted to create another level of components all i have to do is press and hold the shift key on the first one then click on all of them individually one by one and then hit and press the alt key and just duplicate and i've got another extra set of canvases that i can create so i can create as many sets as I want in order to help me to create all the components that I wanted for this particular design. Now, I already went ahead and created the components so that this video wouldn't be very long. The first thing that I did over here was I typed in close-up shot of an excited gorilla holding some barbecue tools in its hand. Be sure that the barbecue tools are clearly visible in the image, plain solid white background. And it was very important that you include plain solid white background because when I didn't do that, I was getting different colored backgrounds. And when I went to go and remove the background, I was always getting, you know, some of the outline of the colored background somewhere, you know, in the nitty gritty parts of the image, which was really throwing me off. So make sure that you always write plain solid white background. It makes it so much easier to remove the background after when you're putting all the, the components together. But I, for this particular set of images, I really wasn't feeling it. They were comical, you know, I, I've got to give it that. But for what I wanted in my mind, it definitely didn't hit the mark. Okay, so then I continued and I thought to myself, okay, an image of a gorilla's face behind a kettle grill with flames licking out of the side of the girl, the, the grill, excuse me, the gorilla has an intent challenging look on its face whilst holding a barbecue fork and thongs in his hands on either side of the grill, plain solid white background. And we were getting something which was interesting, but again, we had a lot of really strange things. I mean, this fork coming out of the gorilla's head here, this particular brush really didn't look on. We, again, I just wasn't feeling good. This, I think, behind me here just looks like shrimps, although the way it's composed looks like, a, you know, an animal brain. So I continue moving on. I thought to myself, okay, so what if I just had to generate an image of a gorilla's head with nothing else? And then I would obviously ask it to compose and compile all of the other images separately. And when I asked it to give me an image of just a gorilla's face, as you can see here, I was getting some really great images, but I wanted it to have a bit of a cartoon feel. So I typed in a cartoon image of just a gorilla's face. The gorilla has an angry and intent bearing its face, plain solid white background. Pardon the grammar, it's definitely totally not on, but Recraft was actually giving me what I was hoping for. And in fact, this was the image that I decided that I was gonna go with. The others were great, but the middle one here, I really didn't like the way the hair was on the top. 
This one was looking to the right. These two over here were actually quite good, quite detailed, but I thought this was gonna be a bit too intricate for the design, but that's just personal preference. Now, I also thought, what if I had to actually overlay a barbecue kettle with some meat on top of it, grilling, and sort of like superimpose it onto the image when I was putting together the design? So I asked Recraft to do just that, and Recraft came back with quite a number of images, but what I wanted was I wanted it to be sort of like at face value, at grill level value, looking at the barbecue from the side here. And it kept giving them to me as if it was basically you know, coming from a bird's eye view. And I tried quite a number of ways to go about it. And then basically um, I sort of settled on to this one here. So I said, well, I'm gonna see whether or not I'm gonna keep it, but for now I was quite happy with that one, but I also need some barbecue tools. I asked Recraft, to give me a cartoon illustration of a metallic barbecue tongue, solid plain white background, and it gave me a number of variations, and I effectively settled on two of them. So now after I had that, I also wanted some flames looking behind the gorilla's head on the design. So again, I only had to do one level of it because I thought Recraft did a really great job, a cartoon illustration of a circle of flames, solid plain white background, and as you can see, I got five really great designs, but I settled on this one here. And don't forget, for each design Recraft generates, you always get two variations. So if I click on the thumbnail down below here, I just change the image to the other variation. But let's go back to the first one, because that is the one that I was going to use. Now, it was time to extrapolate those images and move them to one side so that I could actually upscale them and work on them. So, okay, so now I basically moved the canvas over and just to give you an example of how I went about and did it, I grabbed the image that I created of the gorilla's head and when you move it to a section on the canvas, I would highly recommend that you do that with a copy. You wanna make sure that you have enough room so that when you upscale it, it's not going to superimpose itself over any other designs and clutter up your workflow. So basically what I normally do is I grab the images, move them to the right, and then after clicking on each one, I hover over the upscale icon just above me over here. And when I click on it, it's going to upscale it 4x, all right? So I've already went ahead and did that with all of them. So again, this is great with Recraft because you can do everything in the house. You don't have to visit any other platforms or whatnot. You're working in one concise platform until you get the components that you need in order to migrate all of them all at one go to another image editing program like Photopea, Photoshop, Illustrator, or even Canva, which is what we're going to be using today. So here they are upscaled. As you can see, it's quite large. Now, the next thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to remove the background. So again, I duplicated it again. You don't have to if you don't want to, but this is the workflow that I like to choose because then if there's a mistake, I always have the images a step back that I can refer to and actually start over again. And then once you click on each of them, just above here, so once you click on each of them that you want to remove the background for, if you just see above here, there's a pair of scissors icon here, you click on it, Recraft will work, and it will remove the backgrounds from each of the images, as you can see that I have over here. So we've got the gorilla head, we've got the barbecue, we've got the two barbecue tools, and we've got the circle of flames. Now it's time to head over to Canva in order to put together the whole entire design. So let's head over there right now. So here I am on Canva, and I have a canvas size of 4,500 pixels by 5,400 pixels. Again, this is the industry standard size, so you can create this and basically upload it to any print-on-demand platform that you want to without any issue. All right, so the next thing that you wanna do is you want to obviously grab the images from wherever they're saved on your hard drive and import them and upload them onto your canvas. Now, I already have them just off camera here, so I'm gonna grab them and I'm going to click and drag and bring them and wait for Canva to upload them. So I'm gonna wait here for Canva to upload them and here they are, they're all set right there, layered one on top of each other, and now it's just a question of putting things together. So let's just start moving things out of the way here. I'm gonna move the kettle grill out of the way, I'm going to take move the, uh, the barbecue tools, I'm even gonna move the gorilla. I wanna start with the flames. Now, some people might say, well, why don't you take all of them and bring them in one at a time? You could do that. This is just a preference of mine too as well. So I basically centered the flames, as you can see here, because Canva has given me the, the horizontal and the vertical lines here, which show that I am centered. Now, all I need to do is just basically grab the handles and bring them up to, so that the top and the bottom margins are touching each other. 
Now, I want to expand it a little bit, and it doesn't matter if I'm going to be losing some of the flames from the top or the bottom. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to grab the middle, and I'm going to extend this all the way from left to right until the margins of this particular image is obviously touching the borders of the canvas. Now, what I want to do is I want to start laying down the tools here, and you may or may not be able to activate them. See, in that particular case, I couldn't, so I'm going to hit Control-Z on the keyboard to go back. But don't worry, we're going to click on Position, we'll click on Layers, and now I've got all my layers that I can actually work with. So I'm going to click on the first tool here, and now I'm just going to drag it, and what I want to do is I want to sort of like angle it. So let's take it to about here again. Totally up to you, preference, you're just eyeballing it. Uh, if you want a little bit more precision, you can use your keys, the keys on the keyboard in order to be able to move things over a little bit. Okay, and once you're happy with it, then you can just leave it there and go to the next one. Again, we're gonna be tweaking after, so we're not definitely set in stone in terms of where we placed everything. What we're doing is we're just starting to lay out the components so that we can get a nice vision of what the design is going to look like. All right, so let's bring the uh, the gorilla head up to the top here. All right, and now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it up here. I'm gonna make sure it's centered, and now I'm gonna stretch it out so that obviously the entire head of the gorilla will fill in the entire canvas size, okay? So we're just gonna bring it over here a little bit, and this is already looking quite good here. So if I just click out of it, all right, we're looking really good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the background color to black so that I will see what it will look like on a black t-shirt. So to do that, we're just gonna click on the background here, make sure we're toggled on it, now we are. We'll click on the background color picker, we'll change the background to black, okay? And things are looking really, really good. Now, if we had to bring the barbecue over, let's bring it to the front here. Um, so we're just gonna drag it to the top here, or we'll grab the gorilla's head and bring it down here. You could bring the barbecue down a little bit. Um, to be very honest with you, I wasn't really feeling it um, after seeing it here on top of everything. I think it's just too many components for this design. Again, again, given the fact that the angle of the barbecue isn't what I was really hoping for, this is making me believe even more that you know it should be deleted. And again, guys, there's nothing wrong with it. You can create as many components as you want, and if something doesn't work, delete it. It doesn't cost you anything to generate more than your time, and you know, for all intents and purposes, it could have come out as something that I could have utilized. But it doesn't matter. I might use this image in another design down the road in the future. So let's delete that. Um, it's already looking great without it. What I might consider doing is taking the utensils down and bringing them down a little bit. But I want them to come down together. So I went back into the layers. I'm going to press and hold the shift key so that I can actually have both of them toggled here. You can see they're both outlined in purple. And now if I click and drag in the center and start bringing things down, um, I can start bringing it and center it even more. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. It's really looking good. It's now time to put the text onto the design. And if you remember, the text that we're going to be using is bring out your inner gorilla. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with gorilla. And what I want to do is I want to have that in large, bold text at the bottom, giving it a bit of a circular you know, layout at the bottom here. So let's do that. Let's click on text here. We're gonna click on heading. Let's take up the size to about 350. We might have to go larger down the road, doesn't matter. And I want a nice Western font. You know, barbecue and Western, they really go well hand in hand together. So let's click on the font here. We're gonna type in Western, see what Canva comes back to me with. And the first one, Chunk 5, is a font style that I've used before. I really absolutely love it. So I just clicked on it, and you can see now heading has taken on the font style of Chunk 5. Now all we need to do is we're going to click and drag it down here. And I'm going to grab the handles, and I'm going to increase it just to about the edge on either side, not necessarily touching it. We're going to click on Effects, and I'm going to scroll down and click on Curve. I don't want it curving from the top, I want it curving from the opposite. To do that, we take the slider handle there and we just bring it past zero and we start going into the negatives. And then basically you just wanna feel it. But obviously you can't put it set in stone because you need to obviously change to the word. So we're gonna turn on caps lock and type in Gorilla. Okay, so now that I've typed in Gorilla, I'm gonna hit effects again, we'll go into curves, Scroll down here, we're gonna take it into the minus area, and we're just going to bring it up. I think that works pretty good. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna give it a nice black outline. 
So we're gonna click on outline, we'll change it to black. And let's see if we take it up to 16 in terms of the stroke. I think that really looks good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click, I'm gonna drag it down here, just hovering above the bottom. Again, you can use your uh, your cursor keys in order to help you move a little bit more too as well. So you're gonna click on it and bring it down here. I'm holding the shift key as I hit the down arrow key. That moves you in 10 pixel increments. So that helps speed things up a little bit. Okay, now I need the font for the top. So we're gonna click on text again, click on heading, Take that up to about 300 this time. Want to make sure that we are on chunk five. I could have duplicated the font, but for me, this is a little bit easier. We're going to double click on it. Okay, so that we'll obviously everything is highlighted. And again, we're going to type in bring out your inner. And it doesn't matter that things are on two different lines here, because the moment that we click on effects and turn on the curve, it's going to put everything in one line. Let's just click and drag it up a little bit. I think the curve of the circle is a little bit too deep. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it out a little bit. So we're going to take it closer to zero and you just want it to be, you know, just touch three to one, just hovering both the left and the right side margins. Now we're not definitely centered here. So we're just going to take the handle and bring it out here so that obviously the border of the text is touching the border of the canvas. And as you can see here, that is the case. We're going, to we're going to click on that again, and this time we're going to click go into effects again. We'll choose outline, we'll turn the color of the outline to black, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take up the thickness of the text to about 60 so that it will be the same as the bottom one. All right, we'll click outside there, and I think that compared to the other designs that we were seeing on Redbubble on Etsy to date, without tooting my own horn, I think this is a far cry better. I don't know if you agree or disagree. Let me know in the comments below. Was there something you would have changed? Was there something that you would have improved upon? You know, this is where we have a healthy conversation in order to try to help each other improve and to take our print on demand businesses and our designs to the next level. I'm actually liking it. This is definitely something that I'm going to be uploading. And as you can see, it really didn't take me that long. It's really quite easy to do. And I hope that this video has actually influenced and motivated you to head in find those keywords on any of the print on demand platforms that are out there, see which ones have a, a low number of results and see what you can do to improve upon the current designs that are already up there on the marketplace so that you can put yourself in a better chance of landing more sales and obviously taking your print on demand platform to the next level. So I certainly hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, smash that like button, turn on the bell notification icon if you are new to this channel. And now I want to invite you to click on the thumbnail that has just appeared on the screen right now, bent on helping you to take your print on demand business to the next level. Thanks for watching. I'll see you there.